Hello friends, welcome to Defense Ops. Today we will talk about NAG ATGM and also why Indian Armed Forces has not given any orders for our indigenous LCH helicopters. So the Indian Armed Forces has not given any orders for our indigenous LCH for a reason and that is because it does not has any operational anti-tank guided missile. As the proposed DRDO Helena and Sant, that is standoff anti-tank guided missile are still undergoing trials. There were some reports that the armed forces were thinking of putting the AGM-114 Hellfire missiles on the Rudras and LCH as they are already operational with the Apaches but this thought was met with an opposition from DRDO as they claim that their missile has performed well during the trials and should be inducted. So we will discuss today the NAG ATGM, its variants and try to understand where it stands when it comes to the anti-tank or anti-armored roles. The NAG missile is all-weather fire-and-forget lock-on after-launch anti-tank guided missile which costs around 3.2 crores and has a range of 500 meters to 4 kilometers. It has a single hit probability of 90% and has a tandem warhead of 8 kilograms with 10 years maintenance-free shelf life. It has a mass of 43 kilograms and is 6 feet 1 inch long and has a diameter of 7.9 inches. The propellant is nitramine smokeless extruded double base and has a subsonic speed of 828 km per hour. For mid-course guidance, it uses a charged coupled device CCD and a two-way data link. And for terminal phase, it uses imaging infrared. The NAG missile's exterior is made of fiberglass. So the third generation fire and forget class ATGM uses an imaging infrared seeker that locks onto the target before launch. The airframe is made up of composite materials with high resistance to enemy countermeasures. The NAG consists of four foldable wings and four tail fins for flight stabilization. There is a real-time image processor next to the imaging infrared system which helps in enabling automatic target detection and tracking. There is also an autopilot that helps in stability and guidance during flights. It uses an electric actuation system for flight controls. So, as it uses imaging infrared guidance in terminal phase and CCD camera during mid-course, it becomes almost impossible to jam. Also, when we talk about the damage it can cause, with 8 kg of tandem warhead, it can give a penetration of 800 mm against the explosive reactive armor protected rolled homogeneous armor. Right now, the launched vehicle is known as Namika, that stands for NAG missile carrier, which is actually a modified BMP-2 which is stretched a bit with some additional wheels and known as Sarath locally. So it is equipped with various electro-optical system including a thermal imager and a laser rangefinder for target acquisition. It carries a total of 12 missiles with 8 in ready to fire mode and 4 in storage. The auxiliary power unit is compact and is low observable, enabling silent watch operation. It also has a nuclear, biological and chemical protection system as well as a fire detection and suppression system also. So if we talk about final trials, according to a report by India Today published a year ago, as a part of the NAC summer user trials, six missions were conducted under extreme temperature condition of the Pokhran ranges. All the missiles have met the mission objectives including minimum range, maximum range, indirect attacks as well as top attack mode and achieved a direct hit on the target. The trials were conducted by the user team from Indian Army as per the user defined trial directive. The missile system has already cleared the winter user trials in February 2019. The government has already issued the acceptance of necessity for induction of NAG missiles after user trials. All the 10 missiles which were fired during winter and summer trials successfully hit the targets. So here is the comparison of this missile with Israeli Spike LR missile as you can see on the screen. So what we can see from the table is that the mass of our NAG ATGM is 2 kg less than the Spike LR and also the penetration is more by 100 mm and all other criteria seems to be identical. Also the NAG ATGM performed quite well during the hot summer trials in Pokhran where in the case of Spike as reported by the week, the sensor of the missile was not effective and could not pick up the target in Indian deserts and that the missile failed during the trials carried out in poker and field and range. Our NAG is better and suits the Indian condition much more in comparison to the Israeli Spike LR. 
Moving on to the different variants of the Nang 80 GM, we have the man portable anti tank guided missile MP 80 GM. This is a third generation man portable anti tank missile which uses imaging infrared for guidance and has a mass of 14.5 kg with range of 2.5 km. It is currently in testing phase and was lastly tested by DRDO on September 2019 where a man portable tripod launcher was used in the test and the target of the test was a dummy tank which was hit in top attack mode. Second, we have the helicopter launched NAG also known as Helena missile. This is air launched version of the NAG with extended range of 7 to 10 km and is launched from twin tube stub wing mounted launchers known as the Dhruvastra. So this missile has both lock on before and after launch modes and is structurally different from the NAG and uses imaging infrared for guidance. So in 2011 the lock on after launch capability of the missile was tested during which the missile was locked onto a target and launched. While the missile was in flight a second target was chosen for the missile to hit which the missile destroyed and hence demonstrated the capability of locking onto and hit a target while in mid flight. In the ground launched lock on after launch test the missile was launched in the general direction of the target on approaching the target images of the area ahead were sent from the missile to the operator via two way radio frequency command video data link the operator identified the target in the images and updated the new target location into the seeker after which the missile homed onto the target and destroyed it Three missiles were fired during the 2015 July trials in Jaisalmer from HL Rudra in which two missiles destroyed the target at 7 km range while one missed. So DRD also modified the seeker of the missile from 128 by 128 pixel to 640 by 512 pixel resolution. Under the trials the missile was again tested on 19th August 2018 where it was successfully test fired from a HL LCH at the Pokhran test range also DRDO and the Indian army tested Helena with a range of 7 to 8 km from the integrated test range in Chandipur Odisha on 8th February 2019 to check the maximum missile range and accuracy as reported by the economic times during the trials the Helena was released smoothly from the launch platform following which the missile tracked the target all through its course in order to strike with high precision Moving on to the third variant which is an upgraded version of Helena called Standoff Anti-Tank Guided Missile or SANT which was first test fired in November 2018 this upgraded version of the missile is equipped with a new nose mounted millimeter wave active radar homing seeker with extended range up to 15 to 20 km in seeker configuration first it has a radome then servo stabilization unit with antenna then rf transceiver if receiver and lastly a signal processing unit talking about testing a year ago it was test fired from a mi 35 successfully now as of present official have claimed that both the missiles helena and sant are ready for production and have cleared all the trials but there seem to be a bottleneck issue with the production of the missile which is yet to be resolved that's why there is a delay in the induction of sch because it does not has any atgm in production as of now on this we will conclude like subscribe and share jai hind